All right, everybody. Welcome back. This is Adam again with Maker Table. If uh, you watched the previous tutorial, let's keep cruising here. If not, I went through um, in detail how to deal with positive space text up here and negative space text down here, um, and pretty much everything you're going to need to know to deal with text in Inkscape. Um, but people want more than text in their signs. Uh, you really want to be selling signs, making money, and finding and figuring out cool stuff that people will buy. You need to combine text with images, all right? Um, I don't know what it is, but words and pictures, people love it. Um, you can sell this stuff over and over again, and uh, if it's generic enough like this, you don't have to make many changes. Um, you know, you can get into like really cool finishes and paints and powder coats and airbrushing and swirly marks with your flap wheel. Um, you know, there's all kinds of options, but the next big skill here, sorry, let me fix this, is uh, images. So, um, if you use free vectors and stuff that isn't copyrighted, it's pretty easy. Um, you basically go to Google, type in what you want, hit enter. We're looking for images and uh, black and white. Uh, the keyword here, type in whatever you want, dog, frog, log, hog, um, and then add vector um, to the end of it or silhouette. Um, those are the two keywords that seem to work pretty good. Um, and then just find something that's black and white, high enough resolution. Um, you can see the resolution right here is 600 by 360. Um, you know, that's good enough. Uh, if you can get up into the thousands, it, it traces a lot better. And uh, you want to steer clear of, you know, stuff like this has a bunch of details and features. It looks cool in print, but when you turn it to metal, it gets pretty tricky, guys. Uh, so go here, right click, save, oh no, not save, link as. I want to save image as, and uh, if you see here, I've already got this one in there, black and white, US flag. Um, then we're going to go back to Inkscape, and I uh, hit Control I for import, and this is going to take you to your file directory system. Uh, let me show you here, what do we got? Inkscape for Plasma, that's what we're doing. Um, and you're looking for this JPEG um, file that you got off the internet. So here we go. This is the American flag. You can see it's too small. Um, and if I just drag right here, I get a weird, doesn't even look like the American flag anymore if I squish it up too bad. Um, so here, let me control Z, undo what I just did. Um, and if you want to redo what you just did, hit control shift Z. Sorry if I'm repeating. You already know this. I get it. I get it. It's boring. But uh, for those that don't, that's super helpful. Hold control while you drag, and it'll maintain the scaling that you already have uh, import it in here. Um, so let's see here, we'll make this you know the right size. Um, this right here, I'm going to select all of it, hold control, make it closer to the right size. Um, and now we have our text and our image as you know a bunch of separate things right now and I'll show you how to combine them and remove the background in a minute. But first thing we need to do is we need to draw it as connected. So I'm going to use this uh, you know, square making tool right here. Um, you could like draw a bunch of bars. Let me show you this way. Um, you know, you can put bars all over this thing. Control C, Control V. We got a bar, bar, bar. Now we're connecting it together. But you know, that's tedious. Takes a long time. So let's not do that. Delete, delete. Let's get all four sides at the same time using some tools here in Inkscape, which is why you're here. Learn some tricks. Um, so we're gonna go to fill and stroke. Uh, we're going to set the stroke as uh, it's already black. You can see the stroke color right here. And the fill, we're going to delete it. Um, but the stroke style, um, I want like an inch wide stroke. I think that's going to be pretty good here. And uh, we're going to put that around the flag. Just kind of wrap it around. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to connect mostly these three bars right here in the flag. Um, so they're not separate things. Uh, we want this all connected as one big sign that we can cut out and uh, hopefully ship and sell to other people. Um, so let's make everything touch here. Let's see, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. Yeah, everything's all connected. Um, I'll take this, let's bring it up to this corner. And then I'm a little big still, so holding control, I'm going to drag down. So these corners are touching. Ooh, that looks clean, right? Um, but these letters are a little low, so let's just bring them up. 
up, 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 up. That looks good to me. Um, and then this up here, I had this bar left over from the last uh, video, which we don't need this bar because we have this big square. So let's just make these letters touch the square we just made. And uh, pretty quickly, boom, we just added an image to text and we have ourselves a sign. Uh, last little detail here is uh, I recommend adding mounting holes. We're drawing this. I have no fill and a huge one inch stroke. Let's get rid of the stroke and add the fill back right over here. And the color we want is white because all the white is going to become empty space air and the black is going to become metal. So we got our picker tool, change this to inches because this is America. And uh, I know with my machine a 0.27 by 0.27 drawn hole nets me out somewhere around a 0 0.23, 0 0.24 uh, perfect for a screw. Uh, so I'm going to well let me show you my little trick with this here. If you draw a square in the corner um, oh actually it's not going to work because the way I drew this up. Anyways we'll put this up right here control C, copy that Control V, there's one down there. Control V, there's one down there. Control V, we got one up there. We got circles everywhere. And then we're going to align these with each other. So hold shift and select those two. Align and distribute. Align these straight across. Select this one. Hold shift. Select this one. Align this straight up. I'm going to move it over till this arrow kind of touches this corner. It'll show me it's pretty much there. Line this one up, hold shift with this one, and then we'll get these level straight across. That way, if you're hanging it with a level, um, your stuff is straight. Boom! We now have a sign, guys. We add a text to an image, and last thing we need to do is combine all these separate pieces into one big thing. So this is the ultimate trick. It took me years to figure it out. I'm about to share it with you in just a second here on YouTube. Please hit subscribe if this is useful to you, um, because it took me a lot of work to figure this out. Um, if you have been messing with this, hopefully this helps. So, Alt B after you select everything. And you see how all the different lines disappeared? It combined this sucker. Uh, we went from a bunch of different, you know, JPEGs, vectors, text, boxes, other boxes. Um, oh, actually, these lines didn't work. Um, but now we have this vectorized, or not vectorized, sorry, this JPEG, this pixelated image that's ready to trace. But let me go back and fix this. I delete that. Um, I need to edit these boxes. Make sure they touch all the metal. Black is black. Okay, we're gonna do it again. You ready? Woo! Alt B! Yeah! Okay, now we drag this off, this one big thing. And then this is really the pretty much the last step before we save. Shift Alt B, which is trace bitmap. Um, it's up here in the menu somewhere. Uh, learn these keystrokes, guys. It'll make you way faster. Um, you'll be happier. So remove background. This is the big box you need to make sure it's checked. You can hit live preview if you want, um, but really from here you just hit OK. And the real check is when you drag this away, you see how now the white turned into empty space. We can see through it as we drag it. And then last thing we want to do is click on this bitmap tool and this will show us the nodes. These are the XY coordinates that are going to go into your cut table and let you know, um, or let your machine know where to go while the torch is on and running. Um, so if you basically pull this up and you get these nice nodes, um, this is a good sign you are ready for plasma cutting. Um, let's go back to the picker tool. Control Shift R is going to resize the canvas. This will make it so when you bring it into cam, this corner is in your origin point. Uh, from here, Control Shift S, save as, and then we're going to say this is a DXF. This is the type of file, I don't know why I was in the wrong folder, this is the type of file that your machine can actually use. You can't tell, I've had to do this a few times to get everything working correctly, um, mostly with my computer and the keystroke logger. I'm new to this, this is not my forte. I make metal stuff, not computer stuff. Um, so yeah, that is it guys. The last thing, um, you know, if you're done, you're done. Take off, thank you so much. Please hit subscribe, thanks for watching. Uh, but here's the last little trick I want to show you guys uh, if you want to error check for your customers or explain to them why something will or won't work or won't look exactly like it's drawn. Um, you're going to draw a circle here and let's make it the size of our plasma kerf. So if you've got a hypertherm torch, 
your curve is most likely 0 0.065. Um, and basically, this little green dot now represents the size of your the fire that's coming out of your torch. I mean, uh, plasma torches are cool. Um, they create the fourth state of matter. We have solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. Um, so they're superheating compressed air in your shop to turn it into plasma, spin it in a little tornado, and shoot it as a jet to blow metal away. Um, but it does occupy space and is a real size. So um, what your cam software will do will know the size of that curve, and it's actually going to stop that torch right here. So this over here, this tip that's drawn, is actually going to be black metal. Um, it's not going to turn into empty space like you want it to. So this is why there's some size limitations on plasma cut stuff. Um, you can only go so small. You know, we all have the customers out there that they're like, oh, that's, that's a really cool design, but, you know, can you make it a belt buckle um, at three inches wide? And you need to explain to them, no, I cannot make it a belt buckle, and here's why. Um, this little dot will help explain it. Let's go up there. And you show them that, hey, you know, uh, you can explain to them however you want, but basically, I got real stuff in the real world that, you know, has to follow the laws of physics, um, meaning, you know, stuff can only fit in, in such a tiny space. Um, basically, these stars, they're not even going to get cut out at all because your cam software knows that the curve, uh, the torch won't even fit in this space, so it's just going to skip it all together. So, you're not going to have any of these stars in your final cutout. It's going to look like this. Then um, this dot also cannot fit between these letters. So this is going to get skipped down here. Um, it can, let's see here. It can't quite fit in the center of this O. So the center of this O is going to disappear. This O is going to disappear. This R is going to disappear. The gap between these two letters is going to disappear. Pretty soon you have a pile of hot garbage that looks nothing like the American flag and uh, you definitely can't even read it therefore no belt buckle guys um, so hopefully that helps you guys uh, when you're planning preventing uh, burning up material to test and check and see if stuff will work instead of actually burning up metal um, just spend some more time on your buns in hopefully your warm uh, office or home and uh, move that little green dot around your screen instead um, yeah so hopefully this helps you guys out that is basically in two videos everything I know about uh, Inkscape for plasma cutting. Um, this 